Okay, pilots. I got my little, they call it a C-129 version two. Got it in the mail today. UPS delivered this one. Got the auto hover on it. And it's got a few other little options. But we're gonna keep one of them secret there. I haven't showed you that one yet. Okay, it's the same helicopter. That gun, I forgot to get TC's helicopter. It's the same helicopter that I've got in TC's bird. Okay. And I haven't got the battery in it. Put my new helicopter battery in it. It's the same helicopter that's in that body. Okay. But instead of cutting the boom, let me show you this right quick. All right, look, look at the size of the motor that's in that helicopter. Okay. Now I'm not complaining. Not saying it's bad, not saying it's, you know, anything wrong with it. But this is the size motor that's in this helicopter. And that was the reason that this helicopter here would not pick up TC's bird when I put it on it. Okay, it picked it up. If you'll watch the video, you know, it just kind of hovered around about a foot off the ground. But this thing here takes off like a bat out of hell. See? But that is a Firefly, Firefox. Yeah, Firefox. Rotoscale. This is not a rotoscale helicopter. This is, they call it a RC ERA. I got this off of eBay from directheli.com, I think that's what it was. But as, as I've put the body of my Airwolf, First thing you do, pilots, is you, you kind of get your main rotor in about the same place as the main rotor is on the helicopter the body. Now, I have moved them as far as a quarter of an inch, maybe even a little more, but not much. So when I put that body up against it, this tail, that's going to be a little difficult here to get it in the right place. Let's see here. Yeah. A little bit further in. I can't because I got that mark tape on it. Mark, there we go. Okay, that's what we was looking at about that that much longer. Damn it, you can't see it. It ain't got no background to it. Okay. So what I've done. And let me just tell you, there's some cons about this one too. The little screw here, I'm going to have to, that little screw right in the center mount of the main body mount there was stripped out. Right here's the screw, if you can see it right there. Okay, it was stripped out. So I've still got it in there, but I, the reason I found out it was stripped out is because I went to take it out thinking that was a screw that holds the boom in. But the boom was actually just pushed in there. It wasn't glue, wasn't no screw in, nothing. So I'm going to take that screw out up here and put some super glue on it and down in a hole there and put it back down in there when I rebuild this. Now, and since this was just pressured, pushed in there, I might put a little super glue on it too. But while I'm here... Let me show you another little trick I do every once in a while. The LED light there. Okay. You know, 
I can't leave it right there. I won't be able to see it. So it just simply is a force type fit there. And let me pull on it here a little bit and see if I got some slack. Because I want to move that to the roof. up underneath the little cliff there. That's not going to give me much. There it goes. Just kind of giving it a little slight tug. There. The lead's coming up right here and see it's going up over top of the motor leads but it's not getting nothing in no bind. And I've got some more lead there. So, and another thing I was thinking about pilots is why not break off of this one? You know, it just it just stays on and it blinks when your battery gets low. Okay, blinks when you need to bind it, before you bind it. See how much I got there and come up here and put it on, on top of the main body up here somewhere. Uh oh. But break a lead off of that. Maybe and put the green and red small LEDs out here. But, you know, you, you're talking about, you know, that. See? So we don't want to drain too much power off of it. So I, I decided not to worry about LED adding LEDs. There's my mark. Now this is made out of carbon fiber. So... stuff in my skin. You should wear like a filter mask over your mouth, but I'm just going to pull my shirt up over my nose here. And get this out of the way. What was that? Oh, grab one on my body sides. Got my line, but also I don't know how they done it at the factory. It might come out of the motor with two little small clips, but the, the, the plug that goes into the receiver, mechanic I and mean, the electronics of the helicopter there is, you know, it wasn't gonna fit through the shaft here like the other one that I shortened. All I done was just pulled the wire through, cut it, put the wire back through. So I've got to be real careful right here. Okay, real careful. Got to make a cut on each side because it's a square body. But doing this is not good for you. Just try to wear a little mask or something, do something. I'm just going to barely touch this thing here. See, my little dust is getting on my cloth there, so I know I'm cutting it. So I'm going to spin it a little bit. Cut that side. I'm not cutting it all the way through. Trying to just barely heat it a little bit. Try to get my line right because there ain't gonna be no dressing. <laughs> Not with that lead going through it like it does. Cut my lead. Where's the 
what in it. They're so small. Just so small. Goodness gracious, I don't know how far we could get through it. But enough does. I like the way this helicopter flies. My TC OH6 flies good. I get back up on my face there so I can see. What I've got to try to do is cut a slit long ways on it to get my lead, get it off of my lead. That's all I had to cut out. And my lead's still intact. Let me see if I got a scratch on it anywhere. I don't see no copper showing through nowhere. I think I'm good. Okay. Now, why are these when I paint at work and when I paint here too? tape off you just got a little few little strands of carbon fiber there sticking out but it ain't it ain't got to be a nice perfect shaper we just want to make it a little bit shorter now. I got to make sure. See how the, the tail rotor guard there is pointed downward. So we got to make sure we got the thing pointed downward when we stick this back in here. And there's a groove in it right here for that lead to go sliding on top of the boom. Just like so. Now my lead's going to be a little bit longer sticking out there, but I just want to make sure it don't get down there into that main gear so I'm just going to kind of fold it back here my 
like I said, I'm gonna put some super glue in here and I've got to take this screw out and put some super glue in there. But my next step is, is let's see here. Got to get these rotor blades off. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You don't tighten these things all the way down that gets tight. You kind of leave that blade loose where this will do a swing. Burping series there. Excuse me. Wow. Since I've been putting these bodies on these helicopters, I've just I've been trying to cut as less off and and try to keep room for servo movement, blade movement, as little as possible. So on this body, you know, you, you got a nice solid, hold solid all the way across here, no holes in it, not just a little small spot that it shows you where the main rotor will be. So, you know, when you first start, we'll take the gear off too, but when you first start, you know, a few places is gonna have to be cut. You know that this servo arm over here is going to have to be moved around. And, and I mean, moving. But there's no actually a way to cut just a small hole there for that lead, that arm and push rod to move up and down in there. So you've got to pretty much cut a slit all the way across that area for that servo. See. Right there. You can't even hardly see the rod. But the front one is up and down also. But your model body is coming together in two pieces this way. So you can just cut a little small slit here for this rod to be able to move. So you don't have to cut a whole big old square out there for it. And I've been trying my best, you know, and keeping up with that to where I can have to cut as little out of it as possible. We're gonna take the gear off and then when you put start to get your body mounted on there, okay? And that was a perfect cut too, because that's exactly where I want it to be. I didn't want it to be right in front of the, the tail fins. I wanted it to be right right at the end of the body, toward them tail fins. Will be right in front of it like so. right behind, excuse me. The, the rotor would be behind the tail fins, like so. All right, <clears throat> the landing gear. Now, this landing gear on this helicopter is all in one body with the plug on the battery. Okay, see the plug for the battery right here? So that means you just can't take your gear off and throw it out, okay? You got to have that battery mount. Uh, I've been lucky. I was lucky with this one. I was lucky with my other one. Now, it ain't fun getting that battery in and out of this thing. I ain't gonna tell you no lie. You gotta take, I take my, my 90 degree owl here, okay? and hook the battery in the back to take it out. I got to hook the battery in the back and pull it back and to put it in there, I've got to stick, as you can see where the tip's bent here, see, that's just perfect to grab a hold of these little holes that's in this battery here and I can, I can get it in and out, see. But I initially get up in there and push it out to get it unclipped because when you once you push it in there, I mean it it, it locks it in pretty good. See? All right. Now, so what I've got to do is just simply cut that off. But let me show you another con. I might take the line off. See the hole for the landing gear mount right there, right in front of the main gear. There's no screw in. 
There's the other one down there. Right in the middle. No screw in it. What, 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 what in the world are they thinking about? So, the only actual thing that's holding that landing gear on right now is just some pressure pins that's on each side of the gear. I'll show them to you when I get out here. So what I do, since I'm cutting the landing gear off, make sure I ain't cutting any kind of leads or anything else but what I want to. All right, and if you just take it and I watch it be glued or something, man, it'll make me look like a fool. And my light's going out on me, so we just want, we're gonna end this here just a little bit. So you're just giving it a wiggle there and it comes right out because it's got them pressure pins in it. And that was, that's, that was all I was holding my landing gear on. So we got to check these things, pilots, when you leave by planes, helicopters, boats, and, and tanks, check them. China man don't want us to have fun. He wants us to crash and, and wreck the thing, so we have to go buy a nut. That's my opinion and my opinion only. So I've got spare screws. I've had extra screws. Let me just explain to you. I've got extra screws. There's one right there. There it is right there. I'm taking them all, heck, I've got six of them now. I'm taking them apart, you know, and doing mods to them. You have extra screws, extra parts. I've got blades for one, two, three, see, one, two, three, four, yeah. Four different kind of helicopters. So I'm putting my screw in here and yeah. That would be pretty good. Let me look at something here. I'll be a son of a gun. No wonder I can't get the dadgum battery in and out. Yep, yep, didn't check that one, Carlos. Listen, listen to me. Practice what I preach, huh? Uh-oh, I'm gonna have to look for one. I ain't got nothing up here. Nope, I ain't got another one. Okay, time is short. But you gotta check them things. Okay, now mounting the body. You got the original body mounts. Oh, stick to the motor. Here, okay. You got these little pins come out and the body snaps on top of it. So that's gonna be the first thing that hits the body as you're putting it in position. Okay, and that's what you want, that's your lineup point, that's your first, first lineup point. You get that pin in an area, you get you, you, luckily that servo arm lines up just perfectly with the main gear rotor, rotor uh, axle. So I've got a line up there. I've got a line up on the tail. I line it up with the tail back here. And a lot of times, pilots, when I would do this, my tail boom of the body would be way off from where this tail boom here is. Because if you noticed on my Cobra, you'll see the top of the boom is up here, way up here, up on top of the original boom of the helicopter. It's, it's sitting right on top of it. But, you know. You gotta do what you gotta do. So that's what you start out with first. You start out with getting that pin and you drill a hole wherever that pin is hitting the body out here somewhere. And that's where you start. You get that pin in there and the next thing it hits, you, you, you modify it to get it around it. Next thing it hits, you'll hit servos. Servos. This one over here especially because it's in, oh, 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 look at there. Look at there, pal. Let me get the line up here before it goes out. You can see that. Look at my two servos there. One's, they're all in line with the body. If I can get the camera on it anyway. That one's straight in line with the body. And that one's straight in line with the body. Now, most of the other ones, the rotor scales, that one right there would be an angle. Okay. 
So that's, that's even better. That's even better. I ain't even want to cut a hole for that. And I'm already pictured in, pictured in my mind that this area here was going to have to be cut out. Okay. Now this area didn't have to be cut out to put that body on, but I done it anyway just to make it lighter. lighter. But I was thinking that that area right there is going to hit that main gear. So I got it cut out of the way. So let me lay this up here and just look. Let me just look. All right, the helicopter is going to have to sit. Uh, yep. That's what I want right there. Okay, the helicopter is going to be sitting. That's much, I mean, look, I mean, you know, it ain't good. But that's as much as the rotor mechanism is going to be sticking out of you. I mean, it ain't going to look like our wall, believe me. Okay. But my main gear is right there. Okay. I uh, didn't have to cut that place up, but it did make it lighter. But as I'm going inward, if you'll notice, that gear is getting pretty close right here. Okay. So I got to keep an eye on that. I might have to drop the helicopter down before I break my antenna off of it right here with the boom. I might have to drop the helicopter down just a little bit, see, and cut out an area out here big enough for the little, little arms in here is on a round body, if you can see the disc here in the center right here. So that moves Let's see if I can do it without turning something up here. That moves the, the angle, I better not do it. That moves the angle of your blades, but that center body there just swings like a pin on that axle, see? All like this. See? So it's got to have room to do that. See? So if I have to put that helicopter up or, or bring it down lower, I've got to cut that area out for that by lining the booms up and seeing where the helicopter is, making sure the, the hole for the pin, driving the pin down and getting closer. And then I noticed here, right here at the motor, look how close the motor is right there. See, right here. It's pretty close right there. So I might have a big old square place cut out right here on the side of that body right there for that motor to fit. Okay, pilots, I've played long enough. We're almost at 30 minutes. And and I'm gonna have to be real easy and gentle with this one, pilots, when I land, because you know, I'm using some plastic landing gear here, so it ain't gonna last long, I don't think. <laughs> How about that strut buster? You think I'll bust them struts up pretty easy? <laughs> All right, pilots, I'm out.